What's up guys? Today's video I'm going to be making a Murphy bed for my office space. To let the bed down you must first remove the lower panel, pull out the headboard, remove the supporting pins and then let the bed down. Now because I had in-laws coming in town I had to hurry up and get the bed done so I couldn't put a finish on the bed and I'll do that in the next video. Now that the bed is down to install the headboard it's as simple as dropping it in place. The bed was custom built for the location it's in and around the window. It's equipped with a 12 inch thick full size mattress, removable headboard to prevent any pillows from falling and it has two attached end tables with a total of four drawers for guest storage. It also has four custom shelves. And before getting into the build, the first thing I had to do was clear the room out so I can see what kind of space I was dealing with. To begin, the room is not that big in size, it's only 12 by 12, so I had to bring my thinking cap. So prior to sketching up this bed, I laid down masking tape marked on that so that I have a complete visual on where the bed need to be. And then I sketched around that. So due to the length of the video, I cut out a ton of the wood cutting process and kept the focus more on the build. Because of the unknowns, I started on what I thought was the easiest to build and that was the mattress box. I'm using pocket hole to assemble the majority of this bed. I used a couple 2x4 which I ripped in half, used those for the cross members, marked those so that I have a general idea on where to put the pocket holes. Instead of buying a Murphy bed kit, I opted to go with these swivel pieces which is boat seat hardware and they only cost me $7 a piece at the local Home Depot store. After figuring out the height that I wanted the bed to be in the down position, I traced out the hardware on the side panel and drilled the holes. To secure the hardware to the side panel, I used two T-nuts per hole as a way of strengthening the support because I don't know how heavy this bed might be. And now it's time to assemble the cabinet for the shelves. When it comes to these shelves, they're definitely my favorite shelf to build because I like the bulkiness of them. I like how they stand out and I think they're easy to make. So as I move on to make more shelves, as you can see, these are built a little different, but they still have the same look. They're not as thick as the first one I just built, but there's a reason why I built this one a bit smaller and I'll explain in a bit. Now 
Now the reason I'm holding this piece of wood up is because of the door I had planned on putting on. That's why the shelves were smaller because they was going to be hidden. But that changed and I ended up sticking with an open shelf. Because of the design change, I ended up adding a fourth shelf later on in the build because I wanted things to look a little more proportionate. So right now I'm building one of two end table, which this one will sit under the shelves I just built. I'm using the panels that I previously drew as a template so that I mark my holes in the same spot. While I'm in the workspace, one of the things I wanted to do was to assemble the bed, at least majority of it, so I can see if there was anything I needed to tweak or work out that wasn't lining up. Even though the bed is not complete, this should give me enough indication whether or not I have any major issue and at this point I don't see anything to worry about. And now I'm assembling the second end table. Because I'm comfortable with what I've seen so far, I'm going to start assembling the bed in the final position. I'll start by attaching the end table to the side panel and then adding the shelf in place. I double up on the plywood which gives a stronger support and the thickness also help to keep the trim consistent. I installed the second end table which just bolts to the bed with a few screws. And now it's time to start installing the trim. To keep the look consistent, I'm using the same material to cover the rough edges on the plywood instead of edge band. This piece of 2x4 serves two purposes, one to anchor the two sides together and the other is a stop for the removable panel. Because this gap was much larger than I anticipated, it actually worked out in my favor. Now I have a place to hide the headboard and a roller catch for this application worked out great.
Now I'm working on the leg shelf. When the bed is down, it's a leg. When the bed is up, it's a shelf. I'm using the same concept as if I was building a floating shelf. Once I figured out the mounting height, I then marked the center of the bed and the center of the board, drew a line and lined that up. As if I didn't use enough screws already, I also added more screws on the back end to strengthen that up a little more. So this piece of wood here is a holding point for the headboard. This may look like a piece of scrap wood, but it's the key piece behind holding the headboard in place. Now, because I wanted the headboard to sit at an angle, I had to cut all the pieces to 22 degrees because that's where I kind of settled on. Now, I'm sure everything looks weird, but um, take my word, it actually works. Because it's just a big slab of wood, it looks kind of boring. So um, I decided to add a few strips of the trim on the headboard to give it some depth. When it came to the doors for the drawers, I was uncertain on how I wanted to build them. And then it came to me, just build some trim. And um, holy crap, that actually worked out. And I actually feel like I cheated now because this was like way too easy. And now it's time to start installing the pull handles. And this is how you know you're getting close to that finish line when you start installing hardware. Because I have had a hard time finding straps to hold the mattress in place, I'm temporarily using a 4 foot bungee cable in place of that. I installed the top, anchored that down with some screws, installed the trim, also secured the bed to the wall with some wooden brackets. One of my support holes is so close to the edge, I'm using a mending plate to beef up the support. The support pin I'm using is just a couple of three inch bolts that I happen to have on hand. For the other support hole, I wanted to keep this one as discreet as possible so I did not use a mending plate. And now it's time to start dressing the room up because at this point, I'm done. You have to give me a pass on the oversized pillow. I know it don't flow, but that's all I have. I'm Glenn with DIY Creators, hope to catch you guys on the next one. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel to catch more videos like this. Peace.